Hey everyone, it's Mike from Clicked Marketing, and in this video, I'm going to show you an example of how you can silo content on your websites. I'm also going to show you how you potentially could use dual silos on your websites. And if you've never heard of dual silos or not sure what they are, you're definitely going to stick around for that. So grab your favorite drink, have a seat, let's get started. Before we dive in too far, this is the third video in the series about silos. If you are not real familiar with silos um, or just starting to learn about them, you may want to go back and watch the other two videos before you go into this one. In the first video, I talk about a uh, basic overview of what silos are and how they work. Second video, I go over some more of the logistics of setting up silos, kind of how pages link together, different options for how you might link pages together, and just some of the I, basics around uh, how silos work. So if you haven't checked those out, I'm going to drop links down below and you can go watch those. Also, if you find this video useful, I appreciate it if you drop us a like down below. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you get notified of upcoming videos so that you don't miss any in the future. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below, or if there's any videos about silos that you'd like to see in the future or any other topics, you can also drop those in the comments down below. With that, let's get started. So in the other videos, we talked about this as a, a basic silo structure where uh, you have your silo page, you have uh, the supporting pages under it, and there's multiple ways that this link structure can be set up. Usually the silo or landing page is gonna link to each of the supporting pages. Many times they all link back to the silo page or landing page. Sometimes they'll share links between them as well. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways that you can set this up and we talked about some of those in the, in the other videos. In this though, we're gonna go over uh, a more specific example. And what I did here is um, using an example of if I was gonna set up a website about uh, virtual private networks. So if we were gonna set up a VPN site, a site that dealt with just topics all about VPNs for people. If you're not familiar with VPNs or virtual private networks, uh, they're generally applications that you can use on your computer, on your smartphone, any mobile device, and they encrypt your connection to the internet, make it more uh, secure, um, and they have a lot of other uses as, as well. So this is an example of how somebody might set up a site if you wanted to build a new site about VPNs. Uh, you might have, these would be the category pages, so this is your home page, and then you have your, your main navigation. Uh, you might have topics about how they work, and, and kind of different topics about understanding VPNs, and different pieces of content there. And these may be siloed, they may not be siloed, that would, you know, depend on how much content you're producing. You might have a topic about news, anything new relating to uh, VPNs, uh, maybe new providers, or providers closing down. Um, new uses for them, things like that. Then you have protocols. Uh, the protocols within VPNs, there's OpenVPN, PPTP, L2TP. You don't need to know what any of this stuff is. These are just uh, different methods by which a, a VPN might work. And you also might want to cover uses for VPNs. Um, you know, people, most common is they're, they're using it for identity protection uh, and security. People also use them for privacy. Um, a lot of people also use them for accessing restricted content. If you're in an area where, um, let's say you're out of the United States and you want to access Netflix from your home account, you can use a VPN to spoof your location and make it look like you're within the United States and access Netflix that way. So, um, but you might have a whole bunch of content about different different uses for VPNs. And then the topic I want to talk about here, and then we're going to go over uh, for the examples that are providers. So you might have a section that talks about different VPN services and providers that are out there. And I just picked three. There's a ton of them out there and you could, you know, expand this. You might have 20 that you wanted to mention if you were actually building a site like this. But um, the ones that I used are private internet access, probably the one of the most, definitely one of the most popular. Um, Hide My Ass, also a really popular one. And NordVPN, another real popular one. And under these, is this is where you're going to build your silos. So under private internet access, uh, you might have different content siloed under it. So this would be your silo or landing page. So this would be the main page where that you're trying to rank for most of the terms around private internet access that people might be searching for, um, for, for PIA. Then you might have a 
uh, review that you write. So you do a full, you know, big long review about the service. Uh, you might do a tutorial where you uh, write a, a long tutorial about how to use the application on desktop computer, on mobile devices, uh, wherever somebody might use it. You could do a topic about pricing plans and packages that they offer. Each of these services usually have different pricing tiers that they offer for different um, that allow different amount of users, different amount of devices, different different things that they offer. And it go goes on and on. You could do all kinds of content. You could do um, you might do a page about how to use NordVPN on Xbox or how to use NordVPN on uh, PlayStation. Um, and you could do that for any of these and could just go on and on to all these different topics. But just just basic idea, you'd have this siloed. So then the way this might look is, um, for example, the let's, let's start NordVPN. The landing page might look something like this, where you have a big long page about NordVPN and you have a table of content. And the table of content is going to link to the review page and the tutorial page and the pricing plan and whatever other pages that you create here. Or you could also set it up this way and we talked about this in the other videos where you have a, a page like this that talks all about NordVPN and then the links are buried so maybe here you talk about by the way we have a full if you want to read our full review of NordVPN then there's a link here. Uh, if you are interested in a tutorial about how to use the NordVPN application, there's a link here. So you bury the links within the content. That's the other way that you can set up the landing page. Either way though, um, that would be the way that you would set up this silo. Now from here, you can take it a step further and use something that are called dual silos or dual plane silos, I've heard them called. Uh, what a dual silo is, would look something like this, where you may set up reviews as another topic and then you have reviews of all the different services that you've uh, that you, you've reviewed. So you might have a reviews landing page, and it mentions each service that you reviewed. You might have a tutorials landing page, and it mentions each tutorial that you've done. And it's I didn't want the arrows to, the diagram to get too messy, but this reviews is linking to this one, and then it's also linking to this one, and it's also linking to this one. And same thing with these down here, the tutorials, pricing plans. So in this way you have, <clears throat> this is why they're called dual plane silos, because on a diagram like this, you have silo going this way, and then you have a silo going this way on the horizontal plane. And this you might set up, um, if we look at the, like the reviews, so the silo page or landing page, you might set up something like this where you have a, a big page about VPN reviews and then you have one of the services, so you have private internet access. You do a short blurb about private internet access and you include a link to, you know, by the way, to read our full review of private internet access, click here. Same thing, hide my ass. You do a little blurb and then you would put a link somewhere in there and NordVPN. You put a, a blurb about NordVPN, what's good about it, maybe pros, cons, just like a short one paragraph, two paragraph review, and then a link to the full massive review. And you'd keep going on for any other services that you, you would have reviews for. Um, and you've seen pages like this before where uh, like you might be looking for web hosts and you see the big long page with like 20 different service providers and they do a short little piece of content and then they link to... The main review same same sort of con concept here and that's how we would set up this page and then from there it depends how you want to structure the site maybe the reviews might be a part of the ma main navigation here or it might be a sub menu under your provider so the providers might be a drop down menu and it has reviews tutorials pricing plans and then also has all the different services that are out there and that's how you can use dual plane silos to uh, add another layer of internal linking to your website that can help all the review pages or tutorial pages or whichever you know the dual plane is can help those pages to rank in the search engines because you have all these extra internal relevant links going there and just before we wrap up here uh, I'm gonna say something that I said in the first silo video that I did and I'm gonna repeat it again here don't get too caught up in all the 
specifics of, of silo. If you're new to, to using silos, um, you know, don't get too worried about if you're doing it exactly right. The reason that silos work so well is because they make people, they make website owners take the time to think about their internal link structure and plan it out a little bit. Most of the websites that are out there, people are just kind of generating content and they're throwing content, you know, maybe within categories, but they're not taking a lot of time to really think about how all their content links together and works together. And that's the reason that silos work so well. So it, it, it's because both for search engines and for users, it makes you think about how your internal link structure looks and, and really plan it out. So don't get too caught up in, in some of the minutia and the, the little details about it. Just the fact that you're planning out your internal links is going to put you way ahead of most of your competitors. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.